Hello. So in aviation, how short is really a short field? That's what we're going to look at today. Hi, my name is Jean-René de Cotteret. I'm a flight instructor at the uh, Rockliffe Flying Club in Ottawa, Canada. So when we're teaching landings and takeoffs to a student, we're normally starting off with a normal take off and landing and that'll be what they'll be using a good part of the time. And then we also teach a short field technique somewhat later on. But do we really explore when we should be using one or the other? So this is what we're going to be looking at today. So our agenda is when is a field short? Uh, what could we consider a short field that we need to do something special about it? Uh, we're going to talk about something that's called accelerate stop distance, which is defined for faster airplanes and more sophisticated airplanes than the uh, Cessna 172 that I usually fly. And um, then we'll do some calculations, which of course all pilots love to do. So um, to give you an example, in 2014, we had a DC-9 that landed at our airport. Our airport is 3,300 feet minus 200 feet for display threshold for landing, so 3,100 feet. The, as you can see from the picture, the DC-9 was actually landed and stopped by what was actually about two-thirds of that. So they landed and uh, stopped it in about 2,000 feet, which is pretty amazing for a large airplane like that. In fact, um, I've seen a lot of cases where uh, students in a Cessna 172, or pilots, even worse, um, didn't really manage to land that, um, that fast. So obviously they were using a short field technique as it turns out, they were also, they've emptied out the airplanes had minimum fuel, minimum passenger load, etc. But um, the idea there is that they could do this here because they didn't have to worry about taking off again. And that's often going to be the issue. If we look at the charts for 172 landing, um, you can see that at 20 degrees, Celsius, which is kind of a moderate temperature, uh, a bit more than the international average temperature. If I'm using a short field technique, in other words, flaps full, power off, maximum braking uh, on, the, on the field, and with zero wind, then I could expect a landing distance of about 530 feet. Great. Uh, so I could land easily in, an air, in a runway that is, say, a thousand feet. Uh, but the question is, would I be able to take off after? I mean, if I want to leave my airplane there after, that's fine. But if I want to take off after, obviously I have to consider the takeoff as well. And the takeoff takes a little bit longer than the, the landing, unfortunately. And we also have to consider uh, what could happen along the process of doing the takeoff where things might not be so good. So this is where we, the uh, accelerate stop distance come in, comes into place. So here's an example for today for us. As it turns out, we are having some construction done on our runway and there is uh, about a thousand feet cut off. So there's, we have about 2000 feet left uh, uh, to, be, to be operational. Um, is that enough to do a normal takeoff? Is that, should we be using a short field takeoff? So let's explore that. So for a takeoff, again, taking my 20 degrees using short field technique um, and assuming, assuming um, that my uh, airport is actually pretty well at sea level, and it is, it's 120 feet above sea level, um, then it would take me about 900 feet to take off. So let's put that down. So take off 900 feet. And then we saw to land, assuming, assuming something happens. It's just as you're coming up on your takeoff speed, you notice, whoops, you have an oopsie moment. 
where you notice that the airspeed indicator isn't working or you notice that your oil pressure isn't okay. So now you want to stop. So you're at about 60 knots, 55, 60 knots. So the uh, short field landing distance ground roll should apply. So now we have about 3,530 feet. So I put that in 530 feet. But how long did it take me to realize that I have an oopsie and start braking or power idle, power idle and then start braking? Well, different sources give different numbers, but typically numbers are three to four seconds for somebody to react and action and start correction. So we'll be generous here and we'll use 300, uh, three seconds. And, and we do it about at 60 knots, about 100 feet per second. So let's say 300 feet. So 900 plus 300 plus 530 is, that's 1200 plus is 1730. So that's not bad if I have 2000 feet and I uh, am able to stop in that distance and I am reacting properly, then I should have uh, 270 feet left before I get here. So I'm, I, I'm going, to, going to end up somewhere around here. Good, excellent. On the other hand, if I were using a normal takeoff technique, well, what does that mean? Well, experiment for us seems to say that you add about 50% to your takeoff rule. So 50% of 900 is 450. So that, that would be now 1350 plus 300. We're up to 16, 1650, right? Plus, so 1650 plus 530. I'm just writing it down because meh, doing math, mental math. And I've got one and one. 2180. So, so 530 equals 2180. That doesn't look so good, does it? So if we were to use a normal technique, uh, Loma takeoff technique here, and we, we have a problem, then we might not really be able to avoid crashing into that. So basically at that point where we would be, oops, not, I don't want to erase here. What I want to do is right. So here I want to do this. I would be somewhere like that. Maybe this is supposed to be frangible surface, but I'd still rather not do that. Uh, on the other hand, there is, of course, these charts tell us decreased distances 10% for each nine knot headwind. So if we had a nine knot headwind, then decrease all of this by 10%. So that would be minus 218. Well, I don't know what the number would be here, but let's say two, seven minus one, six, 11 minus two, nine, so 1960. So I could barely make it. This is, and this is assuming that my reflexes are, are good. So conclusion, 2000 foot runway without any wind, I, that really wouldn't be a good idea to be able to take off. So this is what my accelerate stop distance tells me. Um, so what it does tell me, of course, is if I do have a headwind, that could help. So um, conclusion out of that, you can certainly land in a very short field, uh, but you won't necessarily be able to take off from it after. Some of the things that could help us, of course, wind, would help us. Uh, temperature would help us because if the temperature is lower, then we'd have shorter distances. But if the temperature is longer, think of a 30 degree day, which is kind of 85 degrees Fahrenheit. That's not very hot for uh, these days. 40 degrees. You're getting uh, like 100 feet, if not more, each increment of 10 degrees on the uh, on the takeoff distance. Wind would help colder temperature, lower weight. I took the, the chart here for 2300 gross weight, but you could have uh, less than that. So anyway, so that is what we've done today. Uh, when is the short field short? Well, 
when you uh, can't take off safely from that field using a normal technique. Accelerate stop distance, we've calculated that. And I'm sure you now are happy to have another skill added to your flying capabilities. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.